Good morning, church. Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Easter Sunday. This is the day of great celebration and culmination when the promise is fulfilled. I've come to you wearing uh, an alb or a robe this morning. This is something you may not have seen me wear before, but this is a high holy day. And someone said, Chris, would you wear your alb? I said, sure. Let's pull out all the stops and celebrate Resurrection Day. I want to say thank you to Jacob Peters and the Peters family and for Dan and others who have helped make this service possible as they have several weeks now in a row. Uh, Dan and Becky and Jacob have come and they've helped us with the visual images of resurrection so that we have the story of life winning out over death in front of us. I do ask that you bear with us a bit with some patience because we have folks working very hard on recording and we have a an even more limited number of tech experts with us than usual and so there are some things that we know we don't have in terms of words of hymns and things that are just a lot more involved so please be patient with us as I was talking with someone this morning it came to mind that when I look out there on the internet and I look through the other services and the sermons and the Bible studies that pastors are doing uh, faithfully, many of us in the clergy are in our offices, are at home with just one person videotaping a scripture reading and a sermon. And so we're actually very blessed here that we are still able to at least be in our sanctuary in terms of the visual imagery and that Dan and Jacob are able to bring us along with almost everything that we typically have. So bear with us. Let's celebrate the good that we have. I want to share another word of congregational communication since this is our time to stay in touch. Our Facebook page is Jacks First United Methodist Church, and the service will be posted on this link, and re, or this page rather, and remain there for a while. It is posted as well on the YouTube channel, if you go directly to that. The email for the church is F-U-M-C, D-O-W-A-G-I-A-C at gmail.com. F-U-M-C Dwajak, all run together, small case, at gmail.com. Reminder, my personal telephone number is 269-462-5317 if we need to communicate. We want to do that. The office remains closed. But again, Becky and I and others are hustling uh, as much at least as usual to keep us connected to do organizational work. I appreciate letters and cards that folks have sent to me as I've been able to send them to others. And I know that you're sending them to each other and calling one another. And I'm very much inspired by your ministry and your dedication. A word on finances, yes, it's a tough time, things are tight, but again, I've been inspired by the way people have stepped up. I know this is a difficult economic time, and some may need to adjust what it is they can give, but I'm also inspired by the ways people are giving, and do encourage you to do so as you are able, and we will receive that in gratitude, and in confidence and respect privacy and in a confidential way we will bundle that up and bring it into our service for a prayer of dedication as we typically do on Sunday morning. After this morning service we are in the Easter season because Easter is much more than simply one day on the Christian calendar. And so we will begin a sermon series next week, the 19th, that addresses the theme to serve a risen Savior. In other words, how do we live 
now that we understand Jesus to be alive and in the world. And that will take place in an unfolding way, that series, over the next six weeks. Watch for more of that. Check your email, please, as we share the scriptures. Becky Peters has shared many of those scriptures already so that you can be prepared through the end of May, wherever we may be worshiping by then, that you may be following along in this sermon series. It will be based on the first letter of Peter, 1 Peter, to serve a risen Savior. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus Christ. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that shines in our hearts this morning. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope, and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Amen. The first reading of Scripture is taken from the book of Acts, Acts 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, <clears throat> preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And reading from 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter, chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. 
for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And reading from the gospel, the great story of resurrection found in John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, <clears throat> and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they had not understood the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When he had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, let me or tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means Teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced all of this to the disciples, saying, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable unto you, our strength and our Savior. Amen. This is the day of days. This is the day of great victory and the day of consummation. 
As a preacher, I love Easter Sunday. And yet there are some times when I wrestle with how we preach the Word. It's not that the story somehow needs my help. And that's what troubles me. Sometimes we as preachers start to think that we need to validate this and we need to validate that and we need to explain this and that. But the reality is so big and wonderful and beyond us that oftentimes the best we can do is simply admire the majesty of God. I remember over 25 years ago driving home from Easter Sunday morning and I was on cloud nine after preaching in a worship service. And as I came around the corner in my neighborhood, I saw another pastor coming around the corner the other way. And I stopped and rolled down my window and he rolled down his and I said, the Lord is risen, brother. I said, did you tell the story today? And he looked at me and he said, well, I told them what the story meant. Somehow that left me (laughs) a little bit underwhelmed. You don't need experts to tell you what this means as all of us are in the same boat in joy and wondrous confusion, perhaps, taking in the majestic truth of resurrection. And today I want to speak about two dynamics in the Christian celebration of Easter. One is the sort of subjective, personal side of Easter, how it speaks to me, to you, to us individually a very important dynamic. And the second is the objective, the wondrous, the cosmic, if you will, truth of Easter. Now some might think I have it backwards, that I should start telling the story about the wondrous, historical, cosmic, unexplained story of Jesus rising from the dead and then perhaps try to help bring it down to earth for us so that it can live in our personal lives. There's nothing wrong with that approach, but today I'm putting it perhaps not backwards, but in what I hope is the right sequence. Appreciating the personal nature of this story and yet knowing in the end that it has such strength because it is beyond us. And it is above us first. And it goes way beyond our capabilities that it comes to us as a great gift. If you read the stories of the resurrection appearance, you'll be struck probably along with me at how Jesus does, in fact, make this truth personal. The story from John 20 is one that I often say sneaks up on us. And by that I mean it's a story that sort of unfolds sequence by sequence. And as you watch the characters in John 20, you could almost see them sort of leapfrog, if you will, over one another to get closer and closer to Jesus. Mary comes and sees the stone is gone, but she does not go into the tomb. Peter and the other disciple then come next. The other disciple first. He comes and he looks in the tomb, but he has vision from a little bit of distance. And then Peter catches up and then goes further than his friend. And finally, When they leave, Mary is there again, and she gets even more personal about her encounter with Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful story of the way we grapple with coming to know the truth of this resurrection, maybe a bit at a time, closer and closer, more and more personally. And finally, Mary sees a figure 
and she thinks he is the gardener around the cemetery, the graveyard, the caretaker, if you will. It's Jesus, but she does not realize that until he names her name. He calls her Mary, and then it becomes not only personal, but intimate, intimate. The way in which the resurrection story lives in our hearts in this very, very personal, intense, intimate way should not be dismissed. The truth of the matter is, this is the first Easter Sunday morning I have preached in years and years. The first Easter Sunday I have preached in years and years. Why is that? It's simply a matter of the order of my ministry for the last several years. I was a college pastor, chaplain, and a professor. And at our college, the school was dismissed on Monday, Thursday. We observed Good Friday. We did not have school, and many of our students went home, and so it was difficult to gather them on Good Friday, though we encouraged them to either do so at home or to plug in, if you will, with local churches. And then on Easter Sunday morning, when I loved for us to get together, many of them were not on campus, worshiping in their home churches or going somewhere to worship at another church in the Adrian area. And so for years, my late wife Kim and I and our son Christopher worshiped in various churches around town on Easter Sunday morning. And so it was very unusual for me to have the privilege of preaching Easter Sunday morning. And then on Easter 2016, Kimmy was ill with cancer. And she was for a time in a medical care facility where they were attempting to do some physical therapy to give her some arm and leg strength so she could help move herself around our home. But she was losing strength as the disease progressed. It was a very sad time, and she was not home. And on that particular Easter Sunday, 2016, I went to the medical care facility and celebrated communion with Kim and with her roommate. It was a tough time and a heavy time, but it was a time that I cherished and that I carry in my heart now going forward. And her disease got worse and worse, and on August 31st, 2016, she died. And so the next Easter, Easter of 2017, and this may sound odd, I just could not make myself go to Sunday service. I was so grief-stricken that Easter, and so sad. I got up, showered, got dressed, and spent Easter Sunday morning at Kim's grave in Oakwood Cemetery, Adrian. It may sound odd, it may sound disturbed, but that's where I was in life at that time. I didn't deny God, I didn't lose my faith, but I just was not in a place where I could gather with the customary Easter celebration. That was a sad Easter indeed. And then, Easter Sunday, 2018, I managed to climb out of my funk enough to invite some of the college students to go with me to an area church. As I said, most of our students went home for Easter Sunday but there were a few who were from far away places. And after I offered an invitation to those who were still in town, one young person named Kelly from Long Beach, California, said, Pastor, I'll take a ride to church if you can give me one. I said, I'd be happy to take anyone, talk to your friends, and when Sunday morning rolled around, the only person standing out there 
at the corner where I was going to give students a lift was Kelly. And so Kelly and I drove down to the local church of her choice, and we celebrated Easter on Easter Sunday 2018 in a way that I had not done for several years. And I will always carry that Easter Sunday in my heart as well as the Easter when resurrection was given back to me. And I tell my friend Kelly that she was the one who gave Easter back to me. That's a gift that she offered to me. And I hope it's a gift to her to know that it was that important in my life. That as I was coming out of my experience of the cross, she was there as a young person, as a friend, on Resurrection Day 2018. You see, Easter does come to us in very personal ways. And it should. It should. Easter comes to us with names like Bob and Joe and Jill and Nancy and, and what have you. Easter, on the first Easter, came in the name Mary. And Easter, for me, a few years ago, came through the name Kelly. But beyond all of this, there is an even greater truth, folks. This Easter truth of resurrection and life after death is not dependent upon our resources and our skills and our ability to cope. And thank goodness, it is beyond our grief. I want to invite Jacob, if you could show the picture. This is the picture of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. This is a famous photograph from World War II. It was taken on the night of December 29th, 1940. On that night, the German air raids over London reached a kind of crescendo. The Battle of Britain, when the Royal Air Force beat back the German Air Force, had taken place the previous summer and fall. And following the defeat of the Germans in the Battle of Britain, the Nazi government settled into this cycle of terror bombing through October, November, December 1940, and beyond December 29th. But on the night of December 29th, a particularly horrid raid unfolded as the bombers came over. And many of their bombs were dropped awfully close to St. Paul's Cathedral, and many lives were lost. In fact, if I understand correctly, the cathedral was actually lit afire in some places, though the fire brigades were able to extinguish them. This picture is a photograph taken that night in 1940. And it has become a symbol of hope and life and resurrection that reaches beyond the experience of terror and death and destruction. Some might call it a symbol of defiance. I call it a symbol of resurrection. That through the worst of it, God creates life, even out of death. I'm told as well that in 1965, several decades later, when Winston Churchill died, his funeral was held in this very same St. Paul's Cathedral. As a great statesman, of course, it was a large affair, the going home of Winston Churchill. And there were many dignitaries present and church leaders and the scriptures were read. And many wonderful tributes were offered with pageantry. 
but perhaps most powerful of all was what happened after the benediction. As people were preparing to leave, a lone trumpeter up in the interior dome of St. Paul's Cathedral played a piece called The Last Post, similar to Taps, but of British tradition, The Last Post, a sort of solemn day is end, it is finished, going away piece. Many thought that was the end of the word until from the other side of the dome inside St. Paul's Cathedral, another trumpeter struck up reveling, reveling, the new day dawning. Evidently, Prime Minister Churchill arranged to have that done at his funeral as a reminder that death is never the final word. There is always the great getting up morning, if you will. Friends, I so desperately needed in my life the personal appropriation of the resurrection story. But you know, I needed more than simply something personal. This may sound odd. In a paradoxical way, in a way that has a logic all its own, I needed something from beyond myself. I noticed that in the culture and in the media these days around the coronavirus pandemic, we see a lot of, quote, tips for surviving the coronavirus, for surviving it in an emotional and psychological way. And they're good tips. Things like suggestions of prayer or meditation. But you know, I've been a little disappointed that even among church leadership, in some cases, it seems that the best we've done is offer these tips for self-care, these webinars for techniques to cope, these workshops on how to get through this in a way that that focuses only on ourselves and our own psychological well-being, as important as that is. Folks, when I went up to the graveyard on Easter Sunday morning and cried, I did not need techniques of self-care. I did not need a webinar giving me tips for coping, as important as those things are. I needed the truth of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so beyond it all, that is the story today. You see, we only have the personal, the intimate, the caring, because it comes from beyond in a glorious way. And that carries us even when we don't feel it, and even when we don't feel like it, there's nothing wrong with self-care and coping and techniques and meditation if they are a kind of means of grace. But please remember, it is a resource that lives regardless of how we feel. And because of that, it is the best news in the world and the only thing that can bring us through the storm. Amen. I invite you to be aware of those who are in need of prayer. I won't name many names this morning, but ask that you continue to pray for the friends that we have shared and that Becky has shared online or through uh, email in particular for prayer need. I will begin our time in prayer. We'll pause for a moment of silent prayer and then close with our Lord's Prayer. Holy living God, 
on this day of days, we come before you aware of the astounding majesty of your life and your creation of new life in the midst of death. Lord, we bring before you the needs of those who struggle in our lives, in our families, but also beyond us and around the world. God, teach us every day to open our hearts to you that we may learn more and more and more the truth of resurrection and share that with others. We ask this in the name of our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we pause and continue a moment of prayer, let us be aware of the great gifts that folks have given so sacrificially and the reason we give those as gratitude and dedicate them to the kingdom of our risen Lord. Let's pray. We give you thanks, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your power on this blessed resurrection morning. Today, blessed God, we gather to remember and celebrate. We remember Jesus who healed the sick and raised the dead. We remember Jesus who gathered children to himself. We remember Jesus who consented to suffer and die at our hand. Today, Almighty God, we celebrate the truth that death could not hold Jesus in the grave. In gratitude, we offer these gifts as signs of ourselves and ask that you multiply them and let them live as a blessing to others. Amen. If you have a hymnal, and I realize most of us don't, I will be leading us in two verses of Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 302. I'll read the words to the first and what I consider the last. It's actually the fourth verse. Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led, Following our exalted head. Made like him, like him we rise. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Christ the Lord is risen today. 
Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys. <clears throat> I'm going to bring that down. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. I'll bring it down for us. So we know where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. <clears throat> Mid like him, like him we rise. Oh, 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 alleluia. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Oh, oh, oh alleluia. Before the benediction, I'd like to give a report on the Action Ministries and invite you to another opportunity to serve. The Action Ministry Center on Main Street is active every Saturday morning between about 9 and noon, actually opening at 10 to noon. Last week, I mentioned that somewhere around 74 boxes or families, we say, we pack the food in boxes, were served. I was reminded, uh, appropriately so, that that's 74 families, but that was actually more than 200 people served. This Saturday morning, we continued, and on Holy Saturday morning, 80 boxes were filled for 80 families, which is actually reaching 268 people. We continue in this important ministry and appreciate your support and invite those who would like to help tomorrow, Monday the 13th, with the mobile pantry to call me or to call Karen Benedicts. You may call me and I'll put you in touch with Karen. The truck will be here a little before 3 in our church, in par our church parking lot, rather, 326 North Low Street, or Low Street. So that's the mobile pantry where we will feed even more people tomorrow the 13th, 3 o'clock, in our church parking lot on Lau Street. Go now in the knowledge and love of God, the Creator Almighty, in the grace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.